This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 46, Sharing the Manga Love. The Weekly Wish List. It's a mostly all-yen press edition of the Weekly Wish List. There's only one title I know for sure I want to read. Puella Magi Kazumi Magica was a series I wasn't sure about, but the last two volumes have revealed some things that have increased my interest, so now I want to read Volume 4, out this week, to see where it is all going. I'd like to read Jack Frost Volume 9 and Pandora Hearts Volume 20, but only in the vein of continuing a series and not because I'm dying to know what happens next. I'm kind of feeling that way with World War Blue from Seven Seas, too. I read Volume 1 and had mixed feelings, so I don't know if I want to continue with the series. Volume 4 is out this week. The Top 10 Department VizManga.com Not a lot of changes on the Top 10 list at VizManga.com. For the week of February 11th, 2014, it's like deja vu. Bleach Volume 59 remains at number 1. Tariko Volume 20 also remains at number 2. A Devil and Her Love Song's final volume, Volume 13, remains at number 3 and is followed again by Yu Yu Hakusho Volume 16, still at number 4. Nura Rise of the Yokai Clan Volume 19 remains at number 5 and is still followed by Naruto Volume 64 at number 6. Voiceover Seiyu Academy Volume 3 is still at number 7, and Knights of the Zodiac Volume 6 becomes the first volume to move as it moves up two spaces to number 8. Boys Over Flowers Volume 14 debuts at number 9, along with Magic Touch Volume 9, the final of this series, debuting at number 10. This is a surprising list. Nothing changed all the way through number 7. This has never happened since I started watching the list nearly a year ago. The only changes were at the very end, and only two titles were switched out. I was surprised the Magic Touch made it onto the top ten, but it is the final volume of the series, so I guess it's not too surprising people will want to see the end of the train wreck. A digital exclusive started on the site this week. One Punch Man started in Viz's Weekly Shonen Jump digital magazine last January and became one of the magazine's buzz titles. It is a comedy about a superhero who has trained so much that all of his hair has fallen out and he can defeat any enemy with a single punch. However, he has become bored and frustrated with winning so easily and is searching for an opponent who can go toe-to-toe with him and give his life meaning. After a year of only being available to Weekly Shonen Jump, this title is available for mass consumption. This title has gotten a lot of good word-of-mouth promotion, so I expect to see it on the list next week in the top five at the very least. Can One Punch Man punch Bleach out of the top spot? The New York Times bestseller list. Things aren't quite as uniform at the New York Times bestseller list. For the week ending February 15, 2014, the title at the top remains unchanged. Bleach Volume 59 remains at number one, while Naruto Volume 64 comes back up four to number two. Toradora Volume 6, a new release from Seven Seas Entertainment, debuts at number 3 as Attack on Titan Volume 11 falls back one more to number 4. Black Butler Volume 16 moves back up to to number 5, while Soul Eater Volume 18 falls back 4 to number 6. Durarara Psycho Arc Volume 3 falls back 3 to number 7, while Attack on Titan Volume 1 falls back 3 to number 8. Kamisama Kiss Volume 14 stays steady at number 9, and Attack on Titan Volume 2 returns at number 10. While the titles themselves don't actually change, they do a lot of moving around on the list. Only two titles stay in the same place, and two titles are switched out, though one is just one Attack on Titan volume for another. Seven Seas Entertainment has at least been able to keep one title on the list, though which title that is keeps changing. What will it be from them next week? Sharing the Manga Love Con season has officially begun, and that means the license announcements will start rolling out in earnest. We saw that this week with Vertical Inc., Yen Press, and Kadansha making announcements at cons and on Twitter and Tumblr. Let's jump right in with Vertical Inc. They were at KatsuCon 20, which was held in the DC metro area. This year it was over the Valentine's Day weekend, so Vertical has three Valentines for fans. They announced licensing Ajin, Witchcraft Works, and Garden of Words. Ajin, or Demigod as Vertical is calling it, is a title I've talked about before. It was among the top 10 nominees for the Manga Taisho Award. 
I mentioned then that I thought it looked like an interesting title for license. Apparently, Vertical agreed. Their description of the series explains the premise a little more. The Immortals first appeared 17 years ago on the battlefields in Africa. Afterwards, the rare, unknown new Immortals, Ajin, started to appear among the general population. K. Nagai discovers he's one of them when he is killed in a traffic accident. He comes to life, and a price is put on his head, starting him on his life on the run from humanity. This is a title that has been scanulated, and Vertical is already getting flack from readers of the scans about the title. Witchcraft Works is about Honoka Takamiya, a seemingly average high school student. He sits next to Ayaka Kagari, the school princess who excels in sports and classes and is attractive to boot. Ayako turns out to be a powerful witch, as Honoka finds out during the Tower Witches incident, where Ayaka comes to his rescue. It turns out Ayaka has been protecting Honoka covertly for a while now, but can now do so openly. There are currently six volumes of the series available, and an anime of the series just started in January, which Crunchyroll is currently streaming. I get a kind of meh feel from the series, but I won't mind checking out the first volume. Garden of Words is an adaptation of an anime film. It is about Takao, a shoemaker in training who goes to a Japanese-style garden in a park to sketch shoes. He meets a mysterious older woman, and the two continue to meet, building a relationship without even knowing each other's names. It's complete in one volume and ended serialization in September of last year. This sounds like a good romantic drama, so I'm interested. The film is available from Sentai Filmworks. All of these titles are from Kodansha, with the first two coming from their Good Afternoon magazine and the third from Monthly Afternoon. They are scheduled for a fall release, with Witchcraft Works already having a release date of September 30th. Yen Press also had a Valentine's Day surprise. They announced three licenses as well. The first was Excel World. They had already announced a license of the light novels. This is the manga adaptation. Taking place in the future, it is about bullied middle school boy Haruki, whose life is changed after an encounter with the school's princess Kuroyuki Hime. Through a piece of software he received from her, he becomes aware of the virtual Excel World and becomes Burst Linker, a knight defending a princess. I'm more inclined to check out the manga than the novels. There are currently five volumes available, as well as an anime that Viz Media is streaming on their Neon Alley service. Yen Press is very good friends. Square Enix provides the other two titles. Ubel Blatt is a fantasy that follows a half-human boy named Koin Zell, who is sent to battle the Emperor's enemies along with the other 14 lances. He is betrayed by his companions and left for dead. So begins his quest for revenge against the lances that wronged him, now known as the so-called Seven Heroes. It sounds like a standard fighting fantasy fair, but checking out the first volume wouldn't hurt. It's kind of surprising that Yen picked this one up. It's at 15 volumes and still ongoing. Barakamon is a slice-of-life comedy about 23-year-old calligrapher Seishu Honda. He has moved to the remote Goto Islands off the west coast of Kyushu. Seishu is a city boy suddenly dropped in the remote countryside where locals drive tractors on the public roads and don't use his front door when they enter his house. His house has also become a popular spot for the kids of the island to hang out. Of the three, this title interests me the most. I like slice of life titles and the art looks cute. It kind of has a Yotsuba feel to me. There are eight volumes so far and it has inspired both a spin-off manga and anime. All three of these titles will be available in the fall. On Wednesday, Kodansha made three announcements, though only two of them were actual new licenses. They start with GDGD GD Dogs, which they are calling Manga Dogs. It is by the creator of two of their other titles, I Am Here and Missions of Love, Emma Toyama. It is about Kana Tezuka, a 15-year-old manga artist who's already published like a pro. Her school starts a manga drawing course, but it turns out to be a fiasco. The teacher is useless, and the other three students are pretty boy artist wannabes with delusions of what being a manga artist is really like. I like Missions of Love and would like to check out I Am Here, so this one gets to go on the must-read list. Their second license is Noragami, which Kodansha is calling Noragami Stray God. It is about Yato, a stray god. He doesn't have a shrine or any worshippers, but he's hoping to raise money to build himself a lavish shrine. To this end, he takes on any job that comes his way, from finding lost kittens to helping a student overcome some bullies. No job is too small for Yato, god for hire. I'm interested in this one and the art looks nice, kind of like Takeshi Obata's work. It has an anime that is currently streaming on Funimation. The third announcement was, not just an omnibus edition of Attack on Titan, but a colossal edition. 
The book will be 7 by 10.5 inches and will be a thousand pages. That's bigger than most omnibuses, but still smaller than Yen Press's coffee table sized Therma Rome. It will include the first five volumes and will retail for $59.99. Unlike the new licenses, which will be available in the fall, this title will be available May 27th. There aren't any really big surprises among these licenses. All fit in with each publisher's existing catalog, and in what is becoming an unsurprising trend, a majority of these titles either have an anime adaptation or have had one announced. Vertical's Ed Chavez has noted several times that their titles with anime adaptations have sold very well, so this is a trend I expect to see continue. Only one of the announcements happened at a con, while the other two were hyped on social media through Twitter and Tumblr. This is another trend publishers have embraced, getting the word out through these platforms, and it's one that I applaud. They will get the word out to more people than just relying on news sites and blogs, and may increase awareness of these titles to the Scanalation reading audience. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at manga xanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.